Scene five starts with Blanche back in this fantasy about Shep. She's continuing, and it's worth asking yourself: Does Shep Hutley actually exist? Um, she's she's writing a letter. She's continuing this fiction that maybe she can get Stella and herself out of that, and she's just breaking into laughter. Why are you laughing? I'm laughing at myself for being such a liar. I think that's ominous. She's already shown herself to not be very good with the truth. Um, and I wonder if that's almost ironic commentary on what she's saying. She's pretending to write Shep. Um, uh, I'm writing a letter to Shep. Darling Shep, I'm spending the summer on the wing, making flying visits here and there. And who knows, perhaps I shall take a sudden notion to swoop down on Dallas. How'd you feel about that? Ha <laughs> ha. She laughs nervously and brightly, touching her throat as if actually talking to Shep. That's an interesting detail, that flirtatious gesture. Um, forewarned is forearmed, as they say. How's that sound? Mo and then, you know, she's going on with this fiction about maybe coming down to visit. And, you know, Blanche has been in their house a long time now. And over the course of this pregnancy, uh, Stella's show, uh, kind of sh beginning to show... And uh, by the end of the play, she has the baby. So it's, it's been a, quite a long time that she's been here. Uh, now to counterpoint scene three, there's a domestic, uh, there's a domestic affair upstairs between uh, Eunice and Steve. Um, they're having some trouble. I heard about you and that blonde. That's a damn lie. I wouldn't mind if you'd stay down at the Four Deuces, but you're always going up. So the Four Deuces... The bar they go to is actually a brothel upstairs. We got some ins we got some sense of that right from the beginning um, when the sailor came by. Um, and Eunice is really upset. Steve's pushing back. And Steve hits her. You hit me. I'm going to call the police. So the count. this is a counterpoint or an echo with scene three. Here we get more domestic abuse. A clatter of aluminum striking a wall is heard, followed by a man's angry roar, shouts, and overturned furniture. There's a crash, then a relative hush. So, so violence in the home is a regular thing, of course. Um, did he kill her? That's a joke, right? Uh, no, she's coming downstairs. Call the police. I'm calling the police, Eunice says. That's the same threat she sends to um, Stanley. Um... They laugh lightly. Uh, Stanley comes around the corner in his green and scarlet silk bowling shirt. That's a great um, image there of Stanley. Uh, he trots up and steps and bangs into the kitchen. Blanche registers his entrance with nervous gestures. What's the matter with Eunice? She and Steve had a row. No, she's not calling the drink. She's just get. She's a police. She's just getting a drink. Oh, that's more practical. Now, these jokes, re-domestic abuse, are worth thinking about in the climate of this play. This is just an everyday, you know, we can joke about it, it's something that happens and that gets resolved. What is actually going on? What does this say about the atmosphere? Um, Steve comes down nursing a bruise on his forehead and looks at the door. Oh, so he gets hit too. Did you hear? Nah, nah, the four deuces. And he, he's a bit timid, and then he turns into affected boldness, you know, manliness. I'm going after her. <laughs> but he is a bit timid, because she hit back. Um, again, I don't think Williams is only one noted in his presentation. There is some tension there. I won't. I must jot them, that down in my notebook. I'm compiling a notebook of quaint little words and phrases I picked up here. I mean, quaint... That's a bit of a dig, isn't it? It's, um, she's, she's, her superiority comes out. But Stanley, you know, he doesn't buy into her. And remember, he's quite resent, he's, he's carrying that resentment from the last scene. Um, you, you're not going to learn, you're not going to pick up anything you haven't heard before. Uh, this is an indication of what he's heard about her. She's a lot more seasoned than she's letting on. Can I count on that? You can count up to 500. That's a mighty high number. This is this is um, this is banter, for lack of a better phrase. 
but uh, it, there's a hostility, I think, beneath the surface. He jerks open the bureau drawer, slams it shut, and throws shoes in a corner. Blanche slightly winces with each one, finally. What sign were you born under? Sign? Astrological sign. I bet you were Aries. Forceful and dynamic. I think that's the god of war. They dote on noise. They love to bang things around. You must have lots of banging around in the army. She, she really, you know, between sarcasm and harshness, that southern gentility, she really, she really just walks that line. You know, um, you're used to banging things around from the army, and you just, you take it out on everything. She's not going to answer. He's not going to answer. He's not going to play into her games. Stella has been going in and out of the closet during the scene. Now she pops her head. Stanley was born just five minutes after Christmas. Whoa. Like, Jesus <laughs> reference. I mean, he's not Jesus. Don't get me wrong. He's not Jesus. I, it's just an auspicious special birthday. Capricorn, the goat, known for their, known to connote... A kind of uh, sexual, uh, you know, look for back or uh, sexual uh, desire. The goat is known for that. Um, my birthday is on the fifteenth of September, so it's August now. So we're in August. She came in May, I believe. So it's been a while. Oh, um, that's Virgo. What's Virgo? Virgo's the Virgin. Ha! He is. He advances a little as he knocks his tie. He's becoming aggressive and he knows something and he wants to explore it. Do you know a guy named Shaw? She's got a lot, light shock. She's dabbing her forehead. She's trying to chill out. Oh, everybody knows a Shaw. No, no, this Shaw knew you in Laurel. But it couldn't have been you, because he, he knew from this place called the Flamingo. She laughs breathlessly. She's very nervous and worried. Um, no, you got me mixed up with someone, because I would never go to that place. Oh, but you know of that place. I've seen it. I've smelled it. He, he's, he's catching her in the net. Oh, you got pretty close if you smelled it. Oh, no, it's cheap. How much? Oh, your your yours is expensive. Yeah, twenty five dollars an ounce, and I'm nearly out. And that's just a hint. If you remember my birthday, she pivots really well, right? She changes topic. She's concealing. Um, but she does have a note of fear. Now look at that. She speaks lightly, but her voice has a note of fear. That's really that's an instruction to the actor to interpret. For us as readers, we have to interpret, well, what is Williams wanting the audience to feel from Blanche's lines? What do the stage directions tell us or reveal us about the words before? Can you read these lines with a light voice, with a point of fear? If you can, you start to discover meaning in the language in a different way for interpretation. Oh, no, no. He must have got you mixed up. So I'll, I'll check on it. That's a threat. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I got an acquaintance who's gonna look into this, basically, but in a much more menacing way. He turns away and crosses. Blanche closes her eyes if she's faint. Steve and Eunice come around the corner. Steve's arm is around Eunice's shoulder. She's sobbing luxuriously, and he is cooing love words. Violence. Resolution. And the pattern is continued. Tight embrace. Actually, maybe it's something like this. And desire, too. These are all connected with these couples. What's, what's Williams trying to say about that? I'll wait for you, the four deuces. Die! Don't I rate one kiss? Not in front of your sister. What's that? Is he playing? Is he mocking? He goes out. Blanche rises from her chair. She seems faint, looks out about her with an expression of almost panic. So this is just setting up the scene. Um, it's, it's, it's hinting more towards Blanche's past. 
It's giving us a feeling of being uncomfortable and showing Blanche a frightened. Um, and in the next video, we're going to look at Blanche and Stella talking.